Moving the limiting structures that we have together. We cannot do it alone. We need to span boundaries between different departments to be able to do this. Boundary spanning is something that has been under um, evaluated, I think. And uh, when we join forces with everybody, when we start asking questions to HR, to managers, to finance, hey, what does this mean? Could we do it in a different way? Because I feel that if we do it this way, um, I'm hindered. I cannot produce as much value. So we work with a three-step process, awareness, why does this need to happen, training, how can we make it happen, and coaching to stick to the new good behaviors. Awareness, training, coaching, that's how we need to work with leaders, HR, and everybody in the organization, the teams as well. As you know, agility is not a recipe for success. I used to say it's the absence of a recipe. Uh, there is no best practice anymore. There is only past practice, and best practice is only used by mediocre companies because you will never be better than your competitor if you use best practice today. Next week, there is another thing that is best practice. That's how fast it goes. But you can try the tools from Agile, and you will increase the principles when you do. So now, in spite of that, I'm going to give you a recipe. How do you grow culture? How do you change the system? Okay, step one, change or remove limiting structures, mainly from finance and HR. That's why we are targeting these specific groups in our training. Then increase the supporting structures instead. That could be Kanban boards, it could be Scrum, it could be objectives and key results, and other more agile-friendly methods and models for working. And then we start to show the new behaviors. When we create the environment, we also change behaviors. And this is how we can achieve behavior change, because culture is all about behavior change in the end. And then we repeat from one, because these structures, uh, limiting structures, have a tendency to creep back up on, on us. It's called bureaucracy, and it happens in every organization that grows and becomes bigger. We created for you an Agile People Manifesto that you find on agilepeoplemanifesto.org. And here are the seven pillars, and then we have tied the Agile People principles to these pillars. So go and have a look if you're interested in why we do what we do at Agile People. Welcome, and uh, last but not least, we invite you to join us. Go to agilepeople.com if you're interested. And I thank you so much for welcoming me here in uh, Brazil, in Sao Paulo. And I wish you a fantastic rest of the conference, everybody. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Bia. It was awesome to hear from you and your experience. Uh, we have a few questions here, but I think we are almost out of time. So, probably I'm going to uh, only ask you one, and then you can talk with the attendees at the portal, okay? So, uh, the most voted one is from Amon, and it is, since the change uh, should start from the managers in HR, what can we do tomorrow if we are not either managers or HR? Yes, um, that's actually the consequence of doing the change, that we will not have HR and managers, but teams will be self-directing, self-organizing, and self-managing, I guess. Um, so it's good. Uh, if you don't have managers and HR, you don't have the limiting structures either. Makes sense, yeah. Folks, thank you so much. I'm going to change the Portuguese, okay? Galera, a gente vai liberar o coffee agora, tá bom? Das 10h50 até as 11h, a gente tá um pouco apertado. Por favor, direcione